Hi guys, how are you all doing? I hope you're in the best of health. I hope you're drinking water and minding your business. If you're new to this channel, my name is Any Any Paul. It's so very nice to meet you. I make content on student advice, medicine, lifestyle, and natural hair. If you're returning, you guys, you guys, you guys. Okay, so in today's video, we are going to be discussing struggles that medical students generally would be facing if these are things that you'd like to know if in case maybe you're about to decide make the big decision to go into medicine you know go into medical school become a medical doctor <laughs> baby let me better prepare you for what you're about to face so please stick around and we will get right into it Okay, so the first problem that we're going to be dissecting today is that if you are a medical student, and this will not just apply to medical students, but because majority of you on here are medical students. If you are a medical student, a medic, in the medical line, anything of that sort, you would almost suck at relationships. The key word is almost suck. When I mean almost suck at relationships is going to be because most of your time is going to be in medicine and you are just generally, yeah, relationships are supposed to be a give in, give out. So you with your friends, you with your guys and girls, and it's still, there's just almost not going to be enough time. And if you check just to confirm what I'm saying is how and how this applies to you, majority of your friends or a good number of your friends that you speak with on a daily basis or on a weekly basis, at least would kind of be along the lines of medicine as well i was right no i was right i wasn't right <sighs> that, that's okay I, I wasn't about to cry anyways but what i was about to say was that because of the fact that medicine takes a toll on your time takes a toll on your resources takes a toll on your person you're literally almost not going to have relationship energy and this is not this is not even about dating or anything of that sort because obviously, I mean, you can date while in medical school. If you can take it or if you can balance it out, I'm just here to say that even your boy-boy, girl-girl relationships, your friends, your besties, your people from high school and all whatnot literally are going to also feel it because you are now in medical school a lot goes on in medical school medical school demands a lot of your time energy resources and you will just be you just get to this point where you're spent and you're like oh okay it's okay i'll reach out to them when i can reach out to them or once in a blue moon and to be honest that's not bad but remember to show up fully when you do show up for them or remember to connect fully or remember to give in fully or give yourself like your hundred when you're with your friends or when you're speaking with your friends over the phone because baby medical school medical school medical school oh my god medical school is about <laughs> to almost blow your brains out so yeah Keep that in mind, okay? Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we are going to be speaking about the problems, the struggles that you'll face and the best ways that you can combat them. So, obviously, if your relationships are suffering, your personal time is suffering because, man, at some point, <laughs> your personal time is going to take a bit in. So, if your relationships or your personal time is suffering, then block out time for that. I literally mean plan our time to take care of yourself, to take care of your loved ones and put it on your planner and work towards it. The second thing on this list is sleep. Believe me, <laughs> you guys don't even know the half of it. So I shot this video um, a, a while back, I think two years ago or so, and I was, I was looking at it in retrospect and I'm like, literally when we were having in-person classes i was sleeping for only six hours five hours and i was i don't know how i was okay with that but at the time five hours was like good enough 
for me and there were even days when i slept like two hours three hours just because we had like a big exam the next day or a big thing we had to show up for and really like get done with and guys to be honest with you that you get to this point where you're like mm -hmm, brah like you're drained one time we were having splunctology and i remember one of my friends <laughs> one of my friends literally did like a nightcap and after the exam like the next day they just went they they I know nightcaps are normal, yeah, but nightcaps that you don't plan for physically, with food, with friends, in a group. My dear, that nightcap was a serious... Well, according to what happened after that nightcap, it was like, sleep galore. Don't break down, okay? Don't break down. So, one of the things that medical school is going to be taking a toll on, on you is your sleep. I don't know if that sentence was correct. For the sleep problem, I honestly, there is no way you can go around this. I am not going to advise you to not study medical school. You actually need to study medical school. So, baby, you are going to be doing a lot of reading. But here's my advice. Find your body clock. Find a clock that works for you. You see how I said that I can do well with like five hours of sleep and kind of be okay like functionally okay you know like i i, I won't be like zombie-ish in class i won't be like walking dead kind of but you guys already you, you guys already know that but it did take me time to figure that out so i mean like you can't just be obviously yeah this is what i advise in your first year of medical school things are going to be a little bit chilled for you yes there's going to be a lot of information a lot of things are going to be coming at you at once you're not even going to understand the jack of what is going on but believe me that's one of your easiest years so i think that in your first second years you should take out time to experiment mm? find the sleep pattern that works for you i have people that sleep like three hours bits then three one hour then bits then you do you get or know if okay you're good with six hours and then a 30 minute nap in the afternoon something of that sort guys discover yourself in essence that is what i am trying to see thanks okay so we are about to go into the third tip and if you haven't already please support this channel by giving this video a like it helps youtube recommend this video to amazing people like yourself if you haven't subscribed already consider joining join the family like yo be here be here for your girl thank you so much thank you yeah 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 subscribe now subscribe thanks the next tip on the list is your health I know you believed that you came to medical school so that when you're done from medical school, you can actually help people and, you know, save the world and be like flash with, you know, scalpel and doing all working or miracles and magics and things like that. But <laughs> that's not always the case. Sometimes medical students or medics fall sick as well and one of the reasons why i am saying this is because no one actually prepares you for the amount of um amount of sick people that you might be interacting with most especially as you go up in your clinical years i mean you're going to there's going to be a lot of exposure to different types of diseases different types of patients obviously you're going to learn but the thing is there is a risk of like just catching something the patient just sneezes like it's tree you'll be wondering if that's covid but anyways we are going to catch it because we are going to stay safe we're going to be quarantined we're going to be drinking water minding our business and saying our prayers amen amen okay so guys back into the video like i was saying like your health is really questioned and one of the ways that i would suggest that you i know here in ukraine um our teachers do take precautions to not take us into very like infectious rooms or to see potential patients that could infect like a whole group or something because a group is quite a large number of people and that group has their own little small circles outside of that group too so, like i was saying because they're trying to curb the rate at which infections past or something like that usually they might not take you to like very infectious patients but there is no telling so 
what you can do to combat this or what you can do to stay on the safe side is to make sure that you've gotten your vaccinations. Make sure that you've gotten your vaccinations. Make sure that you are vaccinated, you are protected ahead of time so that in case anything is going around i'm going to use this quick example yeah so in third year or fourth year i can't really remember and then there was this measles outbreak and then the school was making a fuss about who is who's who's been vaccinated who's not being vaccinated and if you weren't yes you were able to get the vaccination for free at that time but there was a really long queue so here's the thing if you had if you already had your vaccinations prior to that time then we won't even be having this conversation because you'll just be chilling. Do you understand? Obviously, you'll be staying safe and doing all of that. But you guys kind of understand um, what I mean. Okay? I hope you do. One of the other struggles that you might be facing is in terms of your hobby and your passion. And why am I saying in terms of your hobby and your passion? It's because you see, like, when you get into medicine, it does take you time to adjust. And then you adjust, 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 and you're done adjusting and you find out that you've adjusted with no space for anything else. So one of the things that you want to do here is up while you're still adapting to your new life, while you're still adapting in, in medical school, while you're still trying to find or get the hang of what is going on here, put in a block of work or put in a block when you're planning your time for extracurricular activities, for fun, you know, for things that you like to do. If you like to watch movies, then by all means, baby, do that. Okay? Okay. So, guys, that is it. Like, I don't... I why I'm, why I'm stressing on this is because I don't want you to be done with medicine or to decide to have a life outside of medicine and there's nothing there. Do you understand? So, the last and final thing that we're going to be talking about today as per one of the struggles or sacrifices of a medical student, a prospective medical student, or a current medic will be your life. No one literally prepares you for the amount of studying that you have to do inside of medicine. So, yes, I understand that you can prepare yourself by reading some books before you actually get into medical school or doing an A level course, you know, in something that's science related. But the thing is, once you get into medicine, you spend literally six years of your life in sciences, then you spend six years of your life or maybe four years doing an A-level course before you actually get into medical school, depending on the country you are going to. One of the good things Ukraine does for us is you actually don't need a previous degree to actually start your medical school. So you do six years and say you want to specialize in something, need some years for internship, getting experience before you actually start your specialization program. So by the time you're in the prime of your career or the prime of your medical life and also so doctor do little life <laughs> like you're already almost middle aged you know or hitting middle age which in my opinion that is that is your youth your prime your life so guys this is one of the reasons why i keep stressing on having a life outside of medicine because to be honest with you like, all doctors are not just doctors. Do you understand? All doctors have something else that they do. Or all doctors should have something else that they do. I think that's the right word. I honestly don't have a solution. But here's what I will say. If you do decide to get into medical school, you do decide to, you know, um, pursue this path. Like, you're not doing this because someone else is doing this or you're not doing this to look cool or you're not doing this for your parents, then I believe that with time, it will be easier to sacrifice some things, let go of some things for the sake of what you love. Okay. And yeah, that's it about my medical school struggles. Guys. Guys, protect your mental health or protect your mental health. Anyways, that is by the way. Okay, so guys, thank you so much for staying with me till the end of this video. If you haven't already, please give this video a like, subscribe if you're new, and join the family. If you're new, okay, make sure to let us know in the comment section. We're having a little party for all of you. Thank you so much. And if you have like any more struggles, any more concerns, any more sacrifices that I didn't touch on, because obviously there are a ton of them. I'm just picking on the ones that I have personally taken account of in the lives of people that I look up to and I have taken account of in my life as well. So 
guys feel free to rub minds in the comments section you guys you guys you guys you guys hashtag medlife journey thank you so much um you guys for sticking with me till the end of this video peace 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 and lots of love